So my name is Sam. I'm a second year student at the University of Calgary in the Industrial Organizational Psychology program. And what my research interests involve is employee recruitment and selection. So to be more specific, I look at how people form impressions of organizations and how those impressions actually influence their job choice decision. So as I talk about this whole process, we can kind of see it as a persuasion process. So I'm really talking about persuasion, but that's a bad word in the psychology literature. So going on, one of the more critical processes of having an organization is staffing your organization. So you don't normally just want anybody to join your company. You want the best of the best. You want the smartest people. So for example, if we look at the US military, they employ upwards of a million people. And in order to maintain that number, they're looking at recruiting 50,000 people a year. And these 50,000 people are not just anybody. They're, they're people within the age ranges of 18 to 24. So how does the army actually go about recruiting such a small subscale of the population? Well, they've turned to gamification. They've actually created a simulator that allows players to experience various roles within the army. So now a player can actually join the army, play as an infantry person or a medic or a militant or a strategist. So they're now learning about organizational values. They're learning about the organization in this fun way. So other organizations such as the Marriott have created other simulations like uh, a hotel management simulation. And similarly, Maersk, uh, Denmark company, a company from Denmark, has created a operation managing um, simulation that allows you to experience what it is like managing an oil rig. So how does playing a game actually change someone's impressions of an organization? So to do that, we're going to talk about attitudes. So attitudes consist of two components. There's actually three components to an attitude, but we're only going to touch on two today. And that's the belief component and the affective component. So the belief component is just what you believe is true. So someone might believe that working in the hotel industry is mindless and boring. And someone might feel negatively towards working in this industry. So the affective component of an attitude is just the emotional aspect, how you feel about your attitude. So overall, this negative attitude towards the industry will not predict you wanting to work there. So what we're proposing is that game design can actually be used to, cha to change someone's attitudes or to influence their attitudes. So by creating a more challenging game, we can now get people to believe that. So for example, if we're playing through a Marriott game and we're managing a hotel and it's pretty difficult, we can get people to believe that this job's actually more complex and challenging than I previously thought, as opposed to mindless and boring. And through game design, engagement, and having fun, they might actually enjoy their experience working as, as a hotel manager. So now that we've covered attitudes, we're going to talk about how we can use gamification or game design to actually drive messages home, so to get people to comprehend messages more. And by doing that, we're going to talk about the elaboration likelihood model. And so this model just predicts or it describes when message processing is more likely to be centrally processed or peripherally processed. So what I mean by that is, let me go back. Um, so when a message is centrally processed, we're talking about stronger attitude changes. So people are paying more attention to a message. They're actually reading the message. And they're more influenced by stronger argument quality of this message. If someone's peripherally processing a message, they're superficially processing the ideas within the message. So they're more influenced by these, um, the length of the message, the credibility of the message, or the number of arguments within the message. So it's a more superficial process leading to weaker or stronger attitude changes. So this model just kind of shows when and, when and where people are more influenced by certain aspects of messages. So to put this all together, and um, we're gonna, I'm going to look at this in a bigger model. So again, everyone starts off with a, an impression of an organization. So for example, in this example, we're going to look at the military. Someone might have a negative attitude towards the military. So someone might feel that all jobs within the military are violent, and they may feel negatively towards that. So understanding their negative attitude, they're not going to want to work in the military. So how do we go about changing their attitudes towards the military or any organization? So that's when the recruitment message actually comes into play. So recruitment messages are designed to influence someone's impressions of working at an organization. And uh, a traditional recruitment process is just something you're all familiar with. It's a job ad within the newspaper on monster.com, just kind of a text, a blurb about 
job characteristics, things you do in the job, and what to expect. And so you're not necessarily engaged with reading this job description if you're not already interested in the company or organization. So gamified recruitment process is just a more engaging way to actually jump into this organization, experience firsthand various positions within the organization and to learn about the organization. So back to the military example, someone who believes that jobs within the military were, are all violent, now they're playing through the game, they're understanding different concepts of the military, different values. Now they realize that not all jobs are violent and therefore I feel better towards the military and which kind of results in them considering working at, in this organization. So I think the more important part is through game design, we can drive the ELM, the elaboration likelihood. Uh, <laughs> okay, so through the ELM, we can design engaging game design and actually get people to comprehend messages further and persuade them more strongly. And I have more to say, but I, I'm out of time, so I'll just take questions, I guess. <laughs> okay.